message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you 
First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. 
because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Christy Diaz. Governor Brian Kemp and the U.S. Surgeon General announcing a new COVID-19 mega testing site right near Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. The state claiming up to 5,000 people per day can be tested there. This comes less than a week after White House Coronavirus Task Force leader Dr. Deborah Burks expressed concern about infection numbers in Atlanta and eight other large cities. 11 Alive's Joe Hinkey joins us live with more. Christy, good afternoon. People are being tested right now in this airport parking lot churn testing center. The state health officials tell us they will be able to test up to 5,000 people here per day, but today is a bit of a soft opening as appointments are being limited to 500 people. This is a partnership between state and federal health officials. Free testing here available to all Georgians regardless of symptoms, but registering and making an appointment online are recommended. The state health department quoting results will be available in 48 to 72 hours. This site will be open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 until August 26. During a press conference, the Surgeon General was asked why this site will be only open for 12 days. Here's his response. About 12 days, that can be long enough for intense surge capacity or surge testing if people continue to do their part by wearing a mask, watching their hands and washing their distance. Uh, I would encourage uh, the state and the governor and Fulton County to reassess in 12 days. But the honest truth is this could be long enough to get people tested, to help people understand the burden of disease and where it's existing, to isolate people, and to combine it with those public health measures because you can't test your way out of this problem. Testing shows you the problem. And as you heard there, can't test your way out of this problem. The Surgeon General still stressing masks need to be worn, hands need to be washed often, and you also need to continue to social distance. We have the exact location of this testing center and a link so that you can register inside this story right now on 11alive.com. We'll send it back to you, Christy. All right, thanks a lot, Joe. Today, North Paulding High School is temporarily shut down. Those students opting for in-person classes will now learn virtually, at least for today and tomorrow, after nine students and staff members tested positive for COVID-19. This is the same school facing backlash after a photo showing an overcrowded hallway quickly went viral. The district says the two-day break from in-person learning will give them a chance to clean the building. The school confirmed in a letter to families nine positive COVID-19 cases. We spoke with a woman who says her two nephews attend North Paulding High and they tested positive after going to school last Monday. Angie Franks told us her nephews started feeling sick that night. She says this is exactly what her family feared would happen. They've both been home all week. They have both, they're both feeling much better. However, <laughs> who knows who they infected on Monday when they were at school all day long with no mask. How are they gonna do it? You know, if so you clean the school for two days, but you're not cleaning the children. They're still carrying the virus. The superintendent said in his letter, parents will be notified on Tuesday night when in-person learning can resume. We have a back to school guide on 11alive.com breaking down plans for each Metro Atlanta district, plus the latest recommendations from state officials. We can send it right to your phone. All you have to do is text the word school to the number on your screen, 404-885-7600. The U.S. reaching a grim milestone amid the coronavirus pandemic. There are now more than 5 million cases in our country. That's a quarter of the world's infections. It took just 16 days to get from 4 million to 5 million cases. According to CNN, there are five states that make up 40% of the country's infections. California, New York, Texas, Florida, and our state, Georgia. Now here in Georgia, there were more than 3,100 new cases reported yesterday. That is lower than the 14 day average, but it is still a high number of new cases. The state also reported 13 new deaths on Sunday. That's down from the 14 day average of about 50. 11 Alive is committed to bringing you the latest on where Georgia stands in the fight against COVID-19. You'll find context and analysis of case numbers anytime on 11alive.com. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Chesley McNeil. If your plans are, will take you outside for this afternoon, for example, make sure you carry an umbrella like this young lady right here. You're going to need that because we're anticipating some scattered thunderstorms to be around. Temperatures will get up to 93 degrees for this afternoon. And when you factor in that humidity, ooh, yeah.
it's gonna feel really, really hot out there. Not much going on right now. We're holding on to some sunshine, which is boosting those temperatures up quite a bit. Uh, initially expected more cumulus clouds to be around the forecast area. You can see up here to the far north, we have a few sprinkles, but again, expecting a few more scattered showers a little bit later on this afternoon. Some of those thunderstorms could be on the strong severe side, especially up in the far north, so we'll watch that. Again, 93 degrees, your afternoon high temperature for today. We'll drop back down to about 86 degrees uh, with those scattered showers around by seven. In fact, we will hold on to the threat for the showers at least through about nine o'clock tonight. Once we lose the daytime heating, that goes away. And then we'll see a little bit more as we head through the week. In fact, the chance for showers going up this week. We'll talk about it in the full forecast coming up. Christy, back to you. All right, Chesley, thanks a lot. Police are investigating a double shooting in Northwest Atlanta. A man was killed, another injured. It happened overnight on Norris Place. Atlanta police say they do not have any suspects, nor do they have any information on a motive. A South Georgia police officer accused of firing shots at teens. The Georgia NAACP is demanding the release of body camera video after police fired into a car with teens and minors inside. The GBI says Waycross officers were attempting to conduct a traffic stop on Saturday morning when a 9, a 12 and a 14 year old bolted from it. The GBI says a 15 and 16 year old still inside the car then began driving towards one of the officers. The officer opened fire, but no one was hurt. The 15 and 16 year old are facing charges, including driving without a license, aggravated assault on an officer and weapons possession. A man is now behind bars after a two year old boy accidentally shoots himself in the head in Northwest Atlanta. Atlanta police telling us the boy was left alone at a home on Delray Drive Saturday morning when he found a gun and shot himself. The two year old still in critical condition. Dontavious Wells, who was supposed to be watching the boy, is charged with child cruelty and firearm possession by a convicted felon. In Lamar County, a deputy is recovering after authorities say he was ambushed. The sheriff's office says Deputy Justin Weaver was responding to reports of a suspicious person Saturday night on Moore Street. They say he was sitting in his patrol car when the suspect ambushed him with a shotgun. Pellets hit him in the face and arm, but he is expected to survive. The suspect, Donald Gordy, got away but was later arrested in Alabama. We're told investigators found weapons in his truck. Another tragedy on Lake Lanier. Two men are dead, a third hospitalized. The Forsyth County Sheriff's Office says they were staying on a boat Saturday night near Mally Mary Alice Park and carbon monoxide from a generator which filled the cabin while the men were sleeping is what killed them. Now, a dog owner pleading for help to find his miniature golden doodle that was inside his car when it was stolen. The owner says he left his Range Rover running with the AC on and his dog Juju inside while he shopped at Whole Foods Market on West Paces Ferry on Friday. He told police that even without the key, the thief was able to drive off with the seven month old pup inside. The Range Rover was found Saturday near a South DeKalb towing yard, but the dog is still missing. The owner is offering $5,000 for Juju's safe return. No questions asked. If, if I'm fortunate enough to get the call and find him, uh, I'll do whatever they want to do. To you know, I, I'm not going to worry about charges or anything. I'm just going to give him the cash and get my dog back. That's all I care about. Yeah, he says the dog was wearing a blue vest with his information on it. New guidelines from the CDC on which face masks do more harm than good. We're walking you through the new information next. More at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive. For months, America's top health officials and experts have pounded home the message. We have to wear masks to combat this pandemic. But now the CDC says just not just any mask will do. The CDC says we should not wear masks with the one way vents or valves. The agency says those masks allow the virus to escape and potentially infect people nearby. The CDC says cloth masks are still the best to wear and protect yourself and others from COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic has made masks a part of our daily wardrobe. As children go back to school, many have struggled. Why is wearing a mask so difficult for them and what can parents do? Here's our Why Guy. Halloween is an occasion when you expect to see children in masks. You don't expect it day after day. For many youngsters, a face covering can be far more than just uncomfortable. A lot of children are afraid of masks. Let's explore why young children have difficulty with masks and what parents can do to help. Adults can find masks uncomfortable, but we understand the need in the COVID-19 era. Dr. Joanna Dolgoff is a pediatrician who says children can't make that leap. Children cognitively can't understand the importance of wearing a mask. It doesn't feel good, it's uncomfortable, they can't breathe, it's claustrophobic. That's all they know. They don't like it and they want it off. Youngsters rely on a smile or a familiar face to feel safe. When that's covered, they can grow uneasy. They're actually scared of them, but there are things that we can do as parents to help them get over this fear. For example, both you and your child wearing masks together while in front of a mirror. You can also put a mask on your child's favorite stuffed animal, or you can draw in a mask on your child's favorite storybook character. Introduce the mask slowly. Practice, practice, practice with your child. Sit with them in the mask for a few minutes. The next day, sit a few minutes longer. Dr. Dolgoff says some children will take to them right away. Others need more time to understand we live in an era when masks are not just for Halloween. Man, if you have ever looked after a two, three, four, five year old, you know how difficult that can be. You know, I have seen masks, however, with a clear insert inside so you can see someone smile. I have used that with my dad. Maybe that would be helpful with young kids. All right, if you have a question for Jerry Carnes, our Why Guy, send it to us on Facebook, Twitter, or on email. Many people asking yesterday, did you feel it? A 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit North Carolina Sunday morning. The quake hit Sparta, North Carolina, right near the Virginia border just after 8 a.m. But people as far south as Thomaston say they felt it. Now, some home security cameras captured the moment it hit. It was the strongest quake in North Carolina since 1916. After it was over, a food lion grocery store shared these pictures of items knocked off shelves. It even caused some roads to crack and shift. Tracy A. McPierce spoke with a local seismologist about why people felt it hundreds of miles away and if we could expect any aftershocks. At 8.07 Sunday morning, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit near Sparta, North Carolina. This baby monitor video shows it happening. Sally Gustafson says it woke her up in Watkinsville, Georgia, almost 300 miles away. I was sleeping and there was just movement enough to wake me up from my sleep. Seismologist Dr. Andy Newman says here on the East Coast, since the Earth's crust is less damaged, these waves can travel very far. Instead of seeing it like over a 20 mile distance away, like you do in California, here you might see it more than 200, 300 miles away. 
Newman calls this earthquake a normal faulting caused by the Earth's crust being pulled apart. He says it was shallow, about three miles from the Earth's surface. And it was not an isolated event. Newman says it was actually an earthquake swarm. There were 11 earthquakes between magnitude 2.3 and 2.6 um, in the preceding couple of weeks. Uh, with a few of those uh, within the 24 hours beforehand. While an earthquake could happen anywhere at any time, Newman says here in Atlanta and across North Georgia, we are more likely to be affected by cluster quakes from two other areas, Charleston, South Carolina, and the Eastern Tennessee Seismic Zone. Which is a, it's, which is a region of earthquakes that extends from northeastern Tennessee on the western side of the Appalachians down through northwest Georgia and then running into Alabama. Newman says events like this are a good time to learn what to do if a stronger earthquake hits and standing in a doorway is not the safest bet. So you drop down to the ground, uh, you try and cover yourself and then the last thing is to hold on. If you're not in a place where you can take immediate cover under something, then you hold on to the back of your head. Newman says there will probably be aftershocks, which could range from 4.1 to another 5.1, and they could happen anytime from this next month to sometime next year. Ooh, scary stuff right there. Scary stuff to feel the earth move under your feet. Ooh, not good, not good. All right, take a look outside right now. This is our live camera from Noonan. Looks beautiful out there. A couple of cumulus clouds around. You know, initially thought there'd be more clouds overhead, but uh, with the cumulus clouds out there, it's nice and sunny and boosting our temperatures right on up as well. Got a couple showers up here to the far north. You can see over toward Rayburn County, Union Towns County, even some stretching back as far as uh, Fanning, Gilmer County. Got a couple sprinkles there everywhere else. The metro area, man, looking sunny and nice. As a matter of fact, it's boosting those temperatures right on up. We're at 91 degrees currently. You know, yesterday on Sunday, we got up to 96. Hottest so far this season. We could get there today if those clouds don't continue to push in or the showers don't start developing. I don't think the showers will start to develop until after one or two o'clock this afternoon. So it could boost that temperature up very close to where we were just yesterday. 90 in Marietta, 90 also in Duluth, 84 degrees in Athens in the 70s up here to the far north where we have the rain right now. And so it's a little bit cooler up there to the North Georgia mountains. Going to give it a six out of a possible 11, 40 percent chance that we could see an isolated shower or thunderstorm this afternoon. Initially had 91 for the high. We're already there. So I'm thinking 93 will be your afternoon high temperature for today. You can see the southeast looking pretty good. It's that available moisture that we have over us. And when you factor in the daytime heating with that, that's where we'll start to see some of those scattered showers begin to uh, form. Notice up here to the north of us over toward Kentucky uh, into uh, North Carolina, western North Carolina. We do have some showers there. Not worried about those bringing us the rain. It will be the uh, showers that develop a little bit later on this afternoon. We also take a look at the tropics. Of course, we're getting closer and closer to peak hurricane season. Nothing much going on in the Gulf off the immediate Atlantic closer to us. Not much going on there, but as we take a look a little bit further to the west, yeah, there's some action out there. Got a couple of little clusters of thunderstorms there. Right now, the Hurricane Center giving this one about a good 60% chance for development. Could become our next name storm. It would be Josephine, if that's the case, and so we'll watch it. In fact, they just upped their um, uh, percent, not just say percentage, but at least the uh, number of storms, name storms, going up to about 25. And if we get up that high, of course, we'll run out of names and it becomes Roman numerals after that. After a W, it becomes Roman numerals. All right, so for us, notice the general effect of thunderstorms, that light green shaded area. But if you notice to our far northwest, we have a marginal risk for severe weather. It's a level one out of a possible five that extends into Gilmer, Fanning County, uh, and into Gordon County as well. So we'll watch that. Uh, that means isolated Strong to severe thunderstorms are certainly possible. So that's something that we'll watch out for as we head into the afternoon. Not expecting that to take place until after about 3 o'clock. Notice we have a few isolated showers around, a couple of embedded thunderstorms, certainly possible. We'll continue to monitor that for you. We're going to lose that threat once we lose the daytime heating, then start it all over again as we head into tomorrow. Only about a 30% chance for the rain tomorrow, 93 degrees for the high temperature. It goes up a bit as we head into the middle of the week. So 50% chance for the rain Wednesday, 60% chance as we head into Thursday. 70% chance as we head into Friday. So a very unsettled week for us weather wise, especially during the afternoons. It's where we can see or we get really active with some of those thunderstorms. We'll remain in the low 90s, 89 degrees for the high temperature on Friday. By the time we hit Saturday, 
We had a 50% chance for the rain. It goes down again on Sunday to a 30% chance for the rain. 90 will be the afternoon high temperature. Carry the umbrella with you if you're going out this afternoon. Christy, back to you. Got my slicker and my galoshes, as Chesley likes to say. I'll keep them close at hand. All right, be prepared to pay more for those holiday packages this year. The Wall Street Journal reporting UPS will impose fees to help offset the cost of an expected surge of online orders due to the pandemic. The fees could be as high as $3 per package for ground shipments and up to $4 per package for air shipments. Some good news for drivers, though. Gas prices remain steady. According to the Lundberg survey, the national average retail price of regular gas is just below $2.25 a gallon. It has technically gone up a fraction of one cent since July 24th. And unless there are significant increases in employment or in-person attendance at school, gas prices are likely to drop between now and October. With the pandemic still going strong, the future of college football is still up in the air. What commissioners of the Power Five conferences are saying about this fall. Majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or all. One of the biggest challenges during the COVID crisis is how to bring college students back to campus safely. Many universities are now welcoming students back, but parents are dropping their kids off to a very different on campus experience. Blaine Alexander has more. From the University of Kentucky to Tulsa's Oral Roberts University to Troy University in Alabama. Starting this week, it's move-in day at dozens of college campuses nationwide. After quarantine, I'm so excited to be in a new environment. I was home for four months. At Georgia Tech, a staggered return. Rooms reconfigured for more single-dwelling options. And a new app where students can sign up for mealtimes or order to go. Any concerns as you drop them off? Well, I'll tell you, not really, because I, I believe that everything's been kind of addressed here at Tech. At Duke University, students are greeted with COVID tests. This fall, only freshmen and sophomores will be housed on campus. This is a difficult but a necessary decision. And at Notre Dame, where classes start Monday, the school's president says all students will be tested before returning. We'll continue to test them. It's critical that we monitor their health, everybody's health. But even with precautions, there are some issues. At Iowa State University, 66 students tested positive for COVID during move-in. The school has set aside space on campus to isolate them. And at Syracuse, a group of students placed on interim suspension for breaking the school's mandatory quarantine. University of Notre Dame here. Back in South Bend, as students return to campus, some are already raising concern. So far, socially distancing seems not great. Rising junior Miguel Hoke is so worried about contracting COVID, he's taking a leave of absence. His virtual learning application denied. I don't want my son sick. I don't want him getting anyone else sick. Even Notre Dame's president is facing some criticism after posing for this picture with students. Masked but not distanced, he later apologized. I made a mistake. Officials say despite their best efforts at prevention, there are measures in place should COVID come to campus. We're going to do everything possible to keep them safe. And what we're telling them also is tell your sons and daughters to act responsibly. College campuses coming back to life as students prepare to face a new reality.
And college football is hanging in the balance. Commissioners of the Power Five conferences held an emergency meeting yesterday to discuss the growing concern that fall sports can't be played because of the coronavirus pandemic. ESPN reports that Big Ten presidents are ready to pull the plug on its fall sports season, and they wanted to gauge if commissioners from the ACC, Big 12, Pac-12, and the SEC will fall in line with them. More meetings are happening this week. The Mid-American Conference became the first FBS league to postpone the fall sports season including football. Up next, recovery and relief. A local man celebrating his return home after a month in the hospital battling COVID-19. For coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Here's a sweet idea from Texas. With restrictions on many senior living centers, the coronavirus pandemic no doubt has been a lonely time for residents and their loved ones. So this center found a way to bring families together safely by creating a hugging booth. It is a sheet of plastic with holes and specialty sleeves that allow family members to put their arms in there and wrap up their loved ones in one big hug. Oh, I love that. Sometimes a hug is all you need. It was a long 31 days, but one commerce man is finally home from the hospital after battling coronavirus. <laughs> An excited sound of parades going down his street right by his home. Friends, family and loved ones of TJ Harper celebrated his recovery with a parade this weekend. TJ spent a month in the hospital and at times doctors did not believe he would pull through. And I have no memory of really the first week of being in the hospital. I went from Brazelton and they moved me to the Gainesville um, Hospital, Northeast Georgia. And then after that, it was breathing machine after breathing machine, another weekend. And then after that, it started progressing. Oh man, TJ is still using an oxygen tank, but he says, man, it is just good 
to be home. I bet it is. We are so happy for your safe recovery. Thank you for watching 11 Alive News at noon. We're so glad you're here. I will be here every Monday and Tuesday from here on out. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and stay safe. Weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.